Blog Talk Radio. All right, I feel good today. Tell them how you feel, Gerald. Come on and get up. Let's pray. Come on, Holy Ghost. Because yes, indeed, he is so, so good. Praise the Lord. And welcome to Fire, 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 the gospel experience that is dedicated to honoring that true God that is the only living creator God. He is the maker and he is the sustainer of everything known and unknown. Now, right now, beloved, is the time to let our minds, bodies, and souls be renewed and refreshed. In our relationship with our great, wonderful, magnificent God, our Father, and His precious and beautiful Son, He is our Prince of Peace. He is our wonderful Messiah and Savior, where there are not enough words in the human language to describe our gratitude, our great appreciation and thankfulness for this Jesus the Christ, our Savior. Right here on Fire the Gospel Experience, this Jesus the Christ is unashamedly and unapologetically as well as unequivocally declared to be the only redeemer, y'all. He's the only acceptable Lamb of God. He's the only chosen one with the keys of life, death, hell, the grave, and to our beautiful eternal life. He's our only hope and light for this lost, dark, and dying world that we are living in. Blessings again to everyone, everyone. Blessings, blessings, blessings. I'm your person and power-driven host, Ron E. Jefferson. And I'm here to bring you the most uplifting spiritual soul inspiration, as well as some of the most anointed gospel music that has ever been made and ever been played via the gospel experience. Real light, ignite, and fan those flames. It's in your spirit, man, woman, boy, or girl, so that you can be that victorious believer in Jesus the Christ. Because I'm here to tell you as a living, breathing, walking, talking, witness for God that he's not a respectful person, y'all. He's just looking for a home behind you, worship, and fellowship with him in spirit and in truth. We will be embracing for your spiritual considerations and your sanctified supplement from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verses 13 and 14, where we hear the Almighty One decree promises to the disobedient children of Israel who were being carried away into a period of 70 years of slavery. This is all due to their disobedience to God. 
and God has chosen the Babylonian Empire to serve as Israel's correction officer. Yet, even though God's people were suffering from the consequential judgment of their own decisions, God has promised to provide protection and a preparation for a future of forgiveness, healing, and restoration, which even applies to you and I as believers today as well. We'll be talking about hide and seek from Jeremiah 29, 13, and 14. But my special guest is here, and she's returning. Talk about entrepreneur, speaker, author, woman of God, Dr. Sharon Monta is here. And due to the expediency of the time, we are going to just bring this woman of God right in right now so that we can get this fire gospel experience discussion where on her first interview, we were discussing her first book, one of many books she had, Intimacy with Christ. But I just felt led by God to bring this woman of God back to share about her other books, talking about trials and trauma. So without any further ado, this woman of God is here. She is back to tell us and share with us. She's going to highlight. We will get into depth about her specific book, Trials and Trauma, in a future day. But right now, welcome, woman of God, Dr. Sharon Manson, back to Fire, the Gospel Experience. We appreciate you being here. Thank you, woman of God, Dr. Sharon Manson. How are you? Oh, I am blessed. I am grateful. And I am satisfied in Christ today. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And how are Amen. you, Ron? It's just, such a pleasure to be with you. It, it is a pleasure to have you back. You have such a beautiful spirit in the things that you do, the way that you address yourself. I know we're on a little bit limited time due to uh, schedules, coordinating, and things like that, but I enjoy you when you speak. You speak so intelligently, so eloquently, and so fluid. It just draws the listening ear to you. So I'm not going to prolong the time because I want to try to absorb as much wisdom and knowledge that you have, Dr. Manchin, that you want to share about us. Would you just please share with us as you see fit? And I do have a table of contents that you sent me regarding your book, Trials and Traumas. But I'd like for you to just go ahead and introduce it. And then we'll just take advantage of much time as we have. Go right ahead, Dr. Manchin. All right. You know, first I'd like to just start off saying that a lot of times when we're born again, we really think that um, Jesus is going to be this knight in shining armor, this Santa Claus, this sugar daddy. (laughs) Someone just is going to, you know, just pick our life up and take us to a place where there's no more trial, there's no more difficulty. Mm. You know, everything is solved and resolved because we said you know, um, we repented of our sins and accepted Jesus Christ. And I was one of the people that thought that, you know. And, um, Mm. but I quickly learned that walking with God and accepting Jesus Christ is not this um, mythical or mystical way of living. He gets in the midst of our life like he did um, the Hebrew boys in the lion den. He doesn't stop our life. Mm. He doesn't you know, um, keep us from all trial. He gets in the trial with us and tempers it so we can endure it. And um, I wrote this particular book because so many people Mm. being a former pastor and co-pastor with my husband for 28 years and then, you know, uh, walking Mm. with God myself and the different things I've been through. I have a son that's in prison that was falsely accused and um, and was put... um, He's been convicted as an accomplice because he didn't stop the other person from doing the crime. And oh, wow. Um, wow. a daughter that was diagnosed with breast cancer and uh, at 32 Jesus. years old. And my son died, my husband died um, three years Ooh. ago. And then my father died uh, two weeks after my husband. My Come brother on. died six months after my um, father died. And, um, and so over this five year span of time, I wrote this book years ago, but over that last mm. five years, I was in, I'm mm. talking about in the trenches of trial. And yes, um, yes. I reflect back on this book because it's really important to understand what trials are. So I'd like to kind of read the definition of what I have in the book on page um, one, chapter one, what are trials? And it says they are mm. seasons of testing that reveal the character integrity of the mind, 
soul, and spirit, um, revealing the inner man. Trials are seasons when intense circumstances, they intrude into our lives, demanding our attention and causing this innermost focus on emotional, mental, and spiritual survival. And um, if that ain't real, I don't know what is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm telling yes, you. No. I'm telling you. Yeah. And so um, when I have been through trials, I mean, I have been through some stuff. I've been in the trenches. And and even in my social work background, um, my husband and I founded a nonprofit family service center on the church campus. And so we contracted with the uh, Child Protective Services and we did outstation, you know, we had social workers and stuff on staff and different things like that, have to clean feces off of people, find them in the, you know, um, in the midst of their, their situations and have to clean them and clean them up like a baby and get them put in the, a sane yeah. asylum or wherever we had to station them. And, and so I've seen the bottom of the earth, and yet I have seen the glory and the magnificent hand of God. And so the Lord has taught me, before I even wrote this book, the Lord talked to me about helping people understand what walking with God is and the miraculous hand of God in our lives. So I'll turn that limit mm. into limit. And um, That's right. with joy, I mean, you know, finding the sugar, the sweet part of life, because it is a bittersweet life. Yeah. And getting saved doesn't stop life. What it does is give us the power and the companionship of God to not only be able to survive the trial, but to conquer it and come out of it without being shipwrecked and bruised and we broke mm. and destitute <laughs> and, and yeah, losing yeah, our yeah. faith. Because that's the real danger, Ron. The danger is when we go through things in our lives that we're not careful, our emotional intelligence, that level of understanding about what this is, you know, that level of understanding can cause us to become discouraged and depressed until we mature up and understand that God is a companion. And he walks with us, and he tempers our survival. And then through it, we learn how to have character and integrity and godly wisdom and strength and and Mm. sharpen our gifts and become more talented and become deeper in God. And then we can go into the trenches and pull other people out because we know what it's like and how to teach them how to survive. And You know, it it, it makes you effective in the kingdom of God. Mm. Well, I guess you so answered my first question. Uh, I, I, I just wanted to jump in real quick, Dr. Manchin. Uh, excuse me. I guess you really answered my first question that I was going to speak on because the Bible tells us in Jeremiah, and I'm going to be reading Jeremiah 29 because it's really touching what I'll be summarizing later on the broadcast. So I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace yes. and not of evil. To give you an expected end, expected not necessarily on what we perceive, but expected end on what God has already determined and done. My question was going to be, so now that you've defined what trials are, what are the purposes of trials? Because if God has an expected end, when we go through trials, that means he's allowed it for a reason. And you kind of summarize it, but if you want to put the icing on the cake. You can share with us a little bit more about what is the purpose of our trials well, as believers. Trials, they really, I mean, they're opportunities for increasing spiritual aptitude. And they actually mm, launch us in a place of spiritual, you know, um, of testing to be able to determine our attitude. And God allows mm. trials to come to show us where we are. You know, a lot of times we think we're somewhere we're not spiritually. We think we can conquer this. You remember okay. um, they did it in the scripture to disciples. Peter did it. Lord, I would never betray you. And yet <laughs> at the time when the fire was turned mm. up, he denied him three times. Mm. You know, and mm. um, so we know that we can think we're the super Christians until the real trial that really pushes your button and dials your number come home. Yeah. And we find out what we're made of. We find out whether we really believe this word. We find out whether we really mm. have an intimate relationship with Christ. We mm. find out where our proclivities are, what our appetites are. We find out where we lean on our flesh. 
and where we're really true yeah. to God and where yeah. we're more true to ourselves. And so trials yeah. are like a reflection of your inner man. They really bring you front and center to take a look at the parts of you and the understanding that you have that is not up front in your conscious mind. I mean, God sees us, but we don't really see ourselves the way that God does. And so trials have a way of surfacing the unknown about our personality and our makeup. Amen. Amen. I, 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 I believe you. And <laughs> well, you know what? Whenever I think about uh, circumstances like we're just speaking of right now, thank you for that very, very weighty explanation because you gave me some, some wonderful insight. Um, I think about the young lady that was a teenage Christian believer at the time of the massacre at Columbine High School. The story was repeatedly told that this individual, who was obviously a worker for the devil, who came in and when he came across this one particular little girl that he knew, and he knew that she was a Christian, I, the story goes that he pointed his gun at her head and said, yes. renounce your faith, renounce your Jesus, yes. or else you're going to die. And that little girl, teenager, said, I won't do it. And he fired and took her life. And I'm telling you, I want to grow up to be just like her, Dr. Nancy. I want to be able yes. to believe that at a point, even at a point of my own loss of life, that I have enough God faith in me to carry me through even the circumstance of facing imminent death. Because we talk about the persecution of the disciples. We talk about the persecution and suffering of our Lord Jesus as we should. But we have not fully heard the story of how many numerous crucifixions there were for believers that we don't even know their name. We won't even know who they were till we get to heaven. There'll be a scene of of a whole panorama, a whole scenery, a whole area of crucifixion of believers. And not only that, but they were set on flames. Uh, to light up the arena. They had Christians that were being burned. So my point That's is right. that trials mature us to a point even unto death, Dr. Manson. You know, and the Bible said that he won't allow us to be tempted above that that we can bear. In other words, above that that we can survive and successfully conquer. When we don't mm -hmm. survive a trial, it's because we didn't do the work when the opportunity to grow presented itself. And we didn't do the individual intentional work because becoming strong and effective in the kingdom of God is intentional. It just doesn't happen because you go to church. It doesn't just happen mm. because we read our Bible. It doesn't just happen because mm. we pray. We have to have a mindset as believers, really, to say, Lord, I want to become like your son Christ. I want my life to be a living epistle. I want the, the fruit of the spirit to be actualized within my soul. I don't want to be, you know, um, sold out to religion, looking like a Christian, pretending to be a super Christian. I want to be the real thing. Come on. And that Amen. every day taking up our cross, you know, and that cross, I'm not talking about being crucified like Vivia Perpetua, you know, in um, before the birth of Christ and, you know, I'm, excuse me, uh, in the birth of the Catholic Church, the world church, which we're, you know, we, Christianity was born out of. I'm not talking about back yeah. then. I'm, I'm talking about mm -hmm. right now when we get up in the morning having a mindset as believers to say, Lord, I'm yours. And whatever yes, it is that's before me today, let me be an instrument in your hand. And keep and yes. help me to have my eyes open so I can see me Amen. where I resist the hope of the Spirit in my life and where I'm weak as a believer. Make me strong. And then walk that Amen. out. And when the Holy Ghost shows us where we're not obedient, you know, turn left and you turn right because you mm. second guess the leading mm. of the Holy Spirit. And then you sitting mm. in traffic for an hour when God was trying to divert you around where the accident was, only had you listened. Mm. And so those little yeah. simple guidance of the Holy Spirit is training for us to learn how mm. to hear God's voice and obey. And simple things, Amen. when you get to the grocery store, the Holy Spirit says, you, you don't have no toilet paper. <laughs> and you listen to God and buy uh -oh. toilet paper. And get home and you rejoice oh, that's because right. you didn't have no toilet paper. <laughs> Or don't obey Amen. and get home and got to go back to the store. So those simple Amen. practices of obeying God so you don't have the 
extra burden and unnecessary things, those small things in your life that hinder your life. God uses them in the very Mm -hmm. beginning to begin to train us and in those simple Mm. acts. And as we do that, we become more astute to God's voice. We learn that God is yes, faithful, yes. that what he says comes to pass, oh, and then we Jesus. learn that we can obey and reap the fruit of that. So I think trials Amen. are really opportunities, and I hear you, I'm going to pause. They're opportunities for us to come into contact not only with the God that saved us and the God that loves us, but come in contact with who we really are. That person that's got yeah. sin carving in their thinking and, you know, emotional Um, maybe even damage from things we've been through that nobody walked us through and helped us heal. All of us have been there and are there. And the Holy Spirit comes into our lives to help us walk Hmm. that out so we can be mature enough for God to really use us. Amen, amen. Yeah, those bells that you hear was not uh, 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 to interrupt you. Uh, God moved in my spirit because when the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, I just felt uh, a, a, a need to get more involved, so I got online and I ordered some, and I ordered me some, and I ordered me some, because I want to be able to give God praise in any facet and out through any avenue that I have. So I wasn't trying to interrupt you or cut you off, Doctor Man. I was just just saying <laughs> Amen in a different way. I was saying Amen in a different yes. way. But while I have the microphone, real briefly. So what I hear you saying, uh, woman of God, is that when we are faced with trials, and the Bible tells us in this world we shall suffer persecution. So trials are inevitable. But we have to understand that nothing passes the purview of God without his approval. And if God has approval, then that means we're talking about my life scripture verse, Romans 8, 28. And we know things work together for the good, to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. So what we need to do is stop necessarily praying for God get me out of this trial, but try God get me through this trial and give me the wisdom. And teach me oh, in the process. Yes. Teach yes, me about yes, me. Yes, yes, yes. Teach me about okay. my surroundings. Teach me about you. Teach me how to uh-huh. get through the trial victoriously so I gather the nuggets of wisdom and spiritual yeah. aptitude that I'm going to need for the next step in my life. Amen. Amen. Now, that's powerful right there because now we can face the life with a more bold and ardent faith that solidifies our mental as well as our emotional well-being. Because what we have to do is we have to gather our emotions within the framework of our faith and not let our emotions take the wheel and put our faith over in the passenger seat. Amen. I know I just said something like that. I'm going to have to write that down. It's powerful, I'm telling you. And I call it trial (laughs) intelligence. Because a lot of times we think, and I'm guilty, Ron, I'm guilty. Where you know you get you going through a trial and you just grab the uh, helm of the of, of the of, of the ship, so to speak, or you know the handlebars, mm-hmm. and you just hold it on. Your feet blowing in the wind, mm-hmm. your hair blowing in the wind. I yeah. like to paint this picture, yeah. and you you know your teeth gritted together, and you're just trying to hold on till you get through the trial. And mm. that's not the picture of a mature believer. And um, Mm -hmm. so I'm adamant about trying to help believers understand there is not only a victoriousness to walking with God, but there is a proclamation and discipline of faith that will cause the trial to be so tempered for you that your hair doesn't even get singed. You won't smell Mm -hmm. like smoke. Mm -hmm. They'll never know you've been in an accident. But if you're just holding on with, you know, your knuckles white, then you're going to get wounded by whatever debris is flying. But if you mm. are uh, walking with intentionality and you got your, your wisdom, your, in, your spiritual intelligence and your, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, mindset toward God that I know what the word says. And the word said that this yes, is yes, my yes, ego, yes, yes. that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And because I know that mm. in the midst of the trial, I can speak scripture to those circumstances and to my own spirit. And say to my spirit, you're going to be still through this. You're going to have peace through this. We're going to walk through this Mm. in worship and in praise. And we're going to declare the victory in this situation. And we refuse to lose. 
And so that Amen. proclamation <laughs> of, of faith commands the trial to come subject to your victory. And that's the Amen. thing that the Holy Spirit is consistently trying to teach us through trial. It's the position of your spiritual attitude, you know, and Amen. overcoming the fear that will cause us to really just trying to run over in the corner somewhere and hide to get through the trial because that's a temptation for everybody. You know, when we get in a situation mm. where the intensity and we don't know, you know, what the outcome is going to be, we have to go back and say, Amen. Lord, I know what your word said. And your word is power. Amen. And your word is victory. And your word has authority. And I'm going to stand mm. and hide in your word. Yeah. No matter what it looks Amen. like. And if the mm. wind blows and blow my house down the street, I'm going to stand still on the foundation of that house, and I'm yet going to pray. I'm yet going to proclaim. Because anything I lose, (laughs) it's because it was time for it to exit. And that's a different mindset. Yes, it is. Amen, 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 amen. Woman of God. (laughs) That's what I do. That's what I do. If it was not for the... Uh, segmented time schedule that we have to follow so that you can uh, be on your way to prepare for your already previous commitments. I would just turn the mic loose to you and let you just go for what you know, man, woman of God. You can trust me and believe that. Listen, woman of God, before you go, um, I know that you have a Facebook Live broadcast, Power of Intimacy with Christ, and I would love for you to share very quickly because I know you have to run uh, with my listeners about this broadcast so that they can continue to receive the wisdom, knowledge, and uh, expertise that you have in spiritual matters for us living in a practical way. Well, um, every Thursday at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, I have a show called The Power of Intimacy with Christ, and it's Facebook Live, and it's pretty um, conversational. The goal is for it to be conversational. I have a co-host that's on you with me. And we try to keep it, um, you know, down on the ground, so to speak, where we're having conversation. And it's not another preaching session. It's not another church service. Right, right, right. Um, but it's a conversation around um, issues that Christians struggle with, you know, and, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and to try to leave some nuggets and some spiritual wisdom about how to overcome and how to face those things that come to rob your faith. Because the goal of the enemy is to rob our faith from us because our faith is our spiritual currency. It's what we can purchase with. It's what we can survive with. It's our shield. Mm -hmm. It's our offensive and defensive weapon. It's spiritual money in the uh, kingdom, you know, in the spiritual realm. And so it's everything we need in order to be successful in life. So the enemy comes back to us in trials to convince us that God is not faithful, that God is not true. That, look, you wouldn't right. be going through this if God was who he said he was. Mm. You know, how come you going through mm-hmm. this and you a Christian? Why do bad things happen to good people? Oh, but Lord. the reality yeah. is, the Bible says that a man's days are few and full of trouble as the spark go upward. Mm. And so we know mm. that in this life, because of sin, being in the world, and God giving man a free will and a free choice, the conduct of sinners impacts and affects our lives. That's just real. Mm-hmm. And so we have mm-hmm. to be girded up, and we have to be astute about how to survive in a sin-filled world and be those people Amen. that God wants to use to bring a passage and a doorway for everyone to want to run out and into the light and into the kingdom. God wants to use us as so that passage into him. And so trials come to equip us. They come to grow us. They come to build us. And yeah. um, my book. If anyone's interested today in the books, you can get them at on Amazon, um, and you can just type in there Dr. Mancha's books, and all three of them will, will populate, and mm-hmm. you can order them right there on Amazon. If you want to tune in to my show, that's Friday night, Thursdays, I mean, excuse me, Thursdays nights at 7 p.m., Facebook Live, mm-hmm. and that's Mountain Standard Time. If you have questions mm-hmm. or topics that you'd like me to talk about on that show, you can put them in the comments section. And we'll put it in our pool and and populate that into uh, one of the sessions that we have. And, yeah, you know, I'm open for speaking engagements. I'm open for conferences and workshops and training. And finally, I have one coming up in August. I'll be doing a conference. And I'd like to announce that. You can check that out um, on Facebook. A posting will go up pretty soon. But I've got a lot going on trying trying to do this work and trying to save as many as I can. 
Amen. Do it, do it, do it. Listen, listeners, we got to let Pastor Sharon Mountain go, but uh, we did uh, sufficiently and speak about trials, what are trials, what the purposes of trial. And uh, I wanted so much to get into Chapter 2, at least highlight a little bit, talk about trauma, drama, because we all have trauma and we all have drama. And it seems like when trauma meets drama, it becomes depression, it becomes devastation, and we need deliverance. So Amen. we will be looking forward to you coming back to us. And I want to say just in closing before I let you go, Dr. Mancha, we talk about the trials, we talk about tribulation, and we talk about trouble. But in his letter, talk about the Paul to the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4, 17, he says, affliction. He said everything that we go through, if you compare it with the reward that is due to us, it is a light affliction for a moment. A lifetime is a moment in the eyes of eternity working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Whatever we go through is just a process that's going to lead us to a higher level of faithfulness and commitment to God so that when circumstances come our way, we won't see it as so much as trouble, trial, temptation. We'll see it as a light affliction because I'm looking at heaven and God is looking at me, and he's going to greatly reward all of us for being and for the woman of God, I so enjoy you coming in and breaking this bread of understanding and wisdom for us. Looking forward to have you come back. As soon as I schedule we we can work it out, I will continue this conversation. And I am blessed to have this King of Collaboration with you, woman of God. Thank you, Dr. Sharon right. Martin, for joining us. You are welcome. Thank I you for having it. me. Can I, can I go out leading this one scripture? Go ahead. It's Hebrews 10 and 23. It says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. And I want to encourage everyone that's out there that hold fast to the word of God and trust God no matter what you're going through. And he will bring you out victorious. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Dr. Sherry, my way of fire, gospel experience. Bless you, woman of God. Got a brother happy, happy, happy up in here, up in here, praising God and thanking him for all of you beautiful, anointed people that are so committed to living this Christian life in power, in knowledge, not scared, not backing down, because we're living in a world that's confrontational. And it's so funny, too, because it's confrontational as the times that we're living in. It seems like everybody got a Me Too movement. Everybody's scared. Everybody's being offended. But yet still, when you're talking about Christian, Christianity, and our Jesus the Christ, they get bold. They get courage. They get all kind of arrogant hair on their chest and want to stand in front of us and try to criticize us and speak our faith down. But don't they know great is he that's in us and he that's in the world? And if they don't, guess what? We're going to show them. (laughs) We're going to speak life into them that cannot hear and that are dead in their spirits. We are the light of the world because the illumination that comes out of the very presence and face of God travels down through time and eternity and poured out on us just like how Moses' face shone and had to be covered by a veil. The radiance of our God resides on each one of us as believers. So let your light so shine, the Bible says. So that men, women, boys, and girls can see that God is real because he lives in us. Like man of God in Racha. He's going to speak life and we are going to listen. Taking this gospel to the street. Speaking life. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Ha. It's power in a tongue. If that's true, I wanna take the time to speak life into you. I'ma help you overcome what you're going through. You're not in this alone. I was sent to put you on. You wanna see how good life is? All you really need is some guidance. The one close to you may not like it. 
that school, cause pretty soon Them fools gon' see that you were a diamond First of all, I wanna give praises to the most high For giving me the strength to make changes in my life Cause without me going through it, I went through How could I even have the wisdom to give you or lead by hand? An example, so let me be your coach You gon' need some advice when you get thrown against the ropes I'ma keep you on your toes, I don't know if you know But there are unseen forces battling over your soul Who wins? Well, that depends on the choices that you make My advice to you is choose life each and every day That's easy for me to say when it's definitely not the case It's tough when you got so much sensation thrown in your face Okay, let's say if you fall by giving in Would you beat yourself up about it or get up and try again? Don't allow sin to be a burden Accept and learn from it, move on and keep working They say it's all in the song if that's true, I want to take the time to speak life into you. I'm going to help you overcome what you're going through. You're not in this alone. I was sent to put you on. I want to see how good life is. All you really need is some guidance. The one close to you may not like it. That's cool, because pretty soon, them fools going to see that you were a diamond. I'm an SC. I do things a look different. I be at peace. I stay in the spirit. I'm a blessing to all those who dwell with me. I'm not flexing when I say my life lady. Love is what my foundation is built on. Everybody I connect with, the vibe is so strong. I'm vegan, so I got love for the animal soup. Still, my sisters and brothers, I do not look at them as food because I'm pro-life. I swear to God, at a living, they be the most tight. And anybody who don't like me, they'll be alright. They can keep that negativity. On that side, I, 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 I. too much love in my heart. Grab a hold of my hand, let me pull you out the dark. I'm a light and that's a light. I'm just here to do my job. Know this journey is a fight. Be prepared to go to war. They say it's you time in the song. If that's true, I want to take the time to speak life into you. I'm going to help you overcome what you're going through. You're not in this alone. I was just to put you on. I want to see how good life is. All you really need is some guidance. The one close to you may not like it. That's cool, cause pretty soon, them fools gon' see that you were a diamond. You are listening to Fire, the gospel explosion where the praises are going up and the worries are going away. Playing for you the best and the newest gospel music on the planet and the most inspiring encouragement under God's heaven. Keep tuning in and bless your family, your friends, and your co-workers by telling them about Fire. If you're feeling good, let me hear you sing, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Woke up with my purpose on my mind. Decided I ain't wasting no more time. I'm on my grind. Nothing's impossible with Jesus on my side. Now every day, I'll be out here walking by. The move that I make and I won't break. There ain't nothing that can stop this way. Yeah. I'm just
me crazy Cause I trust somebody that I can't see And I believe with everything in me That I'ma get all the things that he told me So I live my life carefree Knowing that he is the key And he got everything I need That's why they call him the king of me So I go have fun, create a little debt Then get back to work, break the internet Cause he is the bag, he is the check He got the plan, he know what's next So every day I go a little higher Waiting on Jehovah Jireh Remember the ones who told ya Nobody but Louis and Anita My God, my God, woman of God, Anita Wilson is in fire to gospel experience along with Ruby Green featuring Kinsey because we out here trusting in God. Don't you understand that that's what the faith walk is all about? Amen. <laughs> Goes right there. You're tuned in to fire, 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 the gospel experience, y'all. Well, we honor God not just on this platform. This platform by the gospel experience, and I'm going to speak for all my special invited guests that this is just an extension of our lives. We just share what we normally do, what we believe with you on this platform because we just felt so uh, compelled, if you will, to share the goodness of God everywhere we have the opportunity to. See, God has so transformed our lives, y'all. We hurt ourselves. We try to keep it to ourselves. Amen goes right there, and that's the gospel truth. Amen, amen, amen. That don't mean we always get it right. Let's get it straight. We're not trying to claim virtues of perfection up in here, up in here, but we have made a turnabout from those things that we know displeases God. And even in weak times, which we Christians have, regardless of our title, regardless of our a tenure in longevity as being a Christian, because I've been blessed to be a Christian for over four decades. And I'm here to tell y'all, I'm still working on some things. If I don't govern myself in a restrictive way of accountability with my own self in the sight of God, I'll find myself caught up all over again. So we out here trusting in God. <laughs> Amen. Goes right there. Yes, Lord. Yes. This is the segment of fire the gospel experience where you bless anointed people of God with your anointed sanctified self will come in and I'll shine my artist spotlight on you people so that you all can go beyond your local achievements of notoriety everybody in your church know you can sing they know your whole family can sing they walk by your house and they hear y'all rehearsing amen so listen I'm trying to let y'all know that there is opportunity which is my ministry to invite you all to be a part of this fire gospel experience on my shine artist spotlight because boy i get such a kick i do i do it's just in me don't ask me why or how but to collaborate with people that are so gifted and so talented in what you do singing gospel music living this gospel life musicians poets whatever the case may be i see the strength and the beauty of all of us working together. You know, I've heard it said, and I believe it's true. God spoke in my spirit. He said, it's the many colors that make the rainbow so beautiful. So while some of us are out there, intentionally or not, competing with other believers, God wants us to let your light so shine so that you will have room to see the beauty of someone else's light collaborating with you and create a brand new chemistry in Christ. Amen. It goes right there. Y'all get free sermons today on this Fire Gospel Experience, and I don't mind sharing because this is gospel truth that we're living right here. So my special guest is here, and this amazing woman of God, I have the pleasure of being introduced to in the 
prosperity of me looking for you, anointed people of God. Psalmist, songwriter, gospel recording artist, and licensed expedition. Amen. He's going to tell you all about it because he's from Chi-Town, Illinois. And if anybody knows about beauty, I grew up in Detroit. So if anybody knows about beauty, I'm telling you, it's some beauty shops in Detroit, Chicago, New York, L.A., I'm going to say Miami, Houston, got it. <laughs> My special guest is here, y'all. And she's here to bless us. We're going to let her share with us all of those things that our God has blessed us with in our shine artist spotlight. And that is woman of God. Shanae L. Young is here on this fire gospel experience to share with us those beautiful things that God has blessed us to do. Come on in the room, woman of God. Shine. Shine this artist spotlight on you. Bless you, woman of God. Shanae L. Young, welcome to fire the gospel experience. How you doing, woman of God? Tell me, tell me how you doing. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Ryan. I am fantastic. I am very happy and ecstatic to be here. Um, and I thank you for your um, very warm uh, welcome and greeting. Thank you so much for that. You there? Yeah. Now, yes, okay. yes, yes. Um, okay. I, I lo- I'm an author. I, I love playing Scrabble. I love words. I love pronunciation. But tell me what this is that you do in beauty because I don't want to mispronounce this word. Is it esthetician? <laughs> what is it? It's, es- it's esthetician. Esthetician. Okay. So I am licensed in Illinois and Indiana. So I offer facial services. Um, so skincare, mm. um, makeup, things of that sort um, where, you know, clients will come in and receive different types of beauty treatments. They may want lash extensions or just a makeup application or different specialty facial, depending on what Mm -hmm. their uh, skin challenge may be, maybe acne or maybe hyperpigmentation or um, dark marks from like acne, you know, leaving marks once the acne has gone away. And so I specialize Mm. in melanin skin. And I went to school okay. in Indiana at Tricosi University, and beauty is the thing uh, that I definitely love. And so um, I love what I do. But esthetician, you you were very close, but that's the way you pronounce it, I was esthetician. Close. Yep, esthetician. you were, absolutely. I was, I, mm-hmm. I, I was just lingering over some of the vowels just in case, just so that I could sound like I was close to it, and I think I did pretty good. So what? You did very <laughs> well. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Woman of God, let me ask you this now. There is appropriate beauty and there is beauty that is overdone. Because I will say this, uh, as, a, as a single man of God, in, in all my virility and all my appreciation of natural beauty, makeup is, in my mind, help me understand now. I know we're talking about you and your gospel ministry, but I'm just following uh, my lead right now. Um, it is supposed to enhance the beauty that you have. Now, if you won't answer the door until you put your face on, or if you run to the bathroom to put your face on, even for members in, in your own household, that's a little bit too much. Do you think that there is an unhealthy balance or unhealthy uh, consideration with uh, the desire for uh, so much beauty, so much makeup? Because if your eyelashes is more like windshield wipers, I'm scared of you. <laughs> oh my god that's hilarious but that's true i think that our programming and i think the things that are before us tv you know um videos music this and that i think that we can become programmed and not understand our own inner beauty and i think that people okay. abuse it because they lack confidence or they don't know you know the beauty that they already possess And so a lot of times I see young women and older women who are trying to change how they look instead of just enhancing, Mm -hmm. adding little sprinkles of things here and there. And and that just doesn't seem sufficient for some. Um, But I don't believe you have to pile on the makeup because you shouldn't look casket ready, you know. But, you know, some people, unfortunately, yes, some of them just overdo it and they just don't know how to do it in a balanced manner, you know. And so... Unfortunately, that is a thing, though. And, and I'm going to say this, too. I, I do understand marketing 
because Maybelline and all of the other makeup industries, they will try to uh, get us to overindulge for the sake of them trying to sell their product. And we bite into it because Beyonce and Rihanna, sure. oh, this is what they do. Mm-hmm. They're on stage. So their, their makeup has to take in consideration their role as artists, as uh, musicians, as well as the lighting mm-hmm. that is necessary for That's them true. to look their best. Not necessarily for us common folks, women, to be walking around trying to wear a face that's really made up for television or for stage. So I'm just saying all this because, woman of God, this thought has permeated within the church circles as well. Sometimes I think women of God, women of faith, and this is not to slight women because we men get caught up in some of the ills of our times as well. But I'm just speaking on right now that women should take more pride in their own natural beauty and not what they can buy. Yeah, I agree with that. I think, though, um, that's the inner struggle that some people have, um, you know, and I think they need to really seek God for, like, Mm. what is the root of it? Like, why am I doing this in excess? Like, why do I feel like I need to pile it on? What in me? Or what yeah. if somebody said, or what is the voice that is speaking to me that's driving me to want to pile it yeah. on because it's not necessary, honestly. And if we look and we get to the bottom of that, some of us have childhood trauma where, you know, we were on the playground and somebody called us ugly or somebody called us car baby or somebody did this. And those voices are still ministering to this day. And so what we try to do, yeah. we try to mask it by piling on makeup and it's not necessary we need to like get to the nitty gritty of where is it coming from what is driving that yeah. is it something on your face that you think is too big too small and now you're trying mm. to you know mask it so it's it, it's multi-layered mm. and I think until mm. the church can start having hard conversations and, you know, yeah, sitting down and really digging deep and excavating why people do what they do, we're going to keep having these issues that we just graze over, but we're not going to the root. We need to go to the root, but even beyond that, we need to go to the seed, and the seed is most likely Satan in some type of way or fashion. He ah. has planted a seed of self-doubt. He has planted a seed of self-hatred. He has planted some type of seed, and those voices continue to minister. And so I think as we expose yeah. him, we can begin to bring healing to the women who do that. I like I don't indulge in like a, a lot of makeup because I don't really need to do that. But I know how to right, use right. it. Like makeup, that was never the thing I went to school for. I went there for skin care because if your skin is in better condition, you won't feel the need mm. to pile on makeup because you will be confident the way God made you. But some of us Amen. have skin conditions and so we pile it on because people have mocked us. They have, you know, made us feel less than. So there are different reasons, medical reasons, why mm. women do it, but then it's some, it's in their programming. That is what they see, and they think that's the standard of beauty. But natural beauty is best, you know what I mean? And if you're going yes, to add amen. something, just enhance and embellish, but you don't need to look like a whole new person, you know? And so I just amen. think the amen. programming has a lot to do with it, a lot. Amen, amen, amen. Woman of God, I guess now... We all can see why Holy Spirit God put me in that vein because I figured now, if I just keep speaking about it, that eventually you was going to take us to the spiritual point of the whole matter right there. You tied it in real Mm -hmm. good, woman of God. Thank you. Because, listen, I'm going to say this to you as your brother in Christ, as your new friend. I've seen pictures of you, and you are a beautiful woman, attractive just as you are. I see how you use makeup to enhance who you are and I'm speaking this to you because you as the person being who you are you are a beautiful representative to share with ladies about having more confidence in your own natural beauty than anything that Maybelline or any of the rest of those makeup uh, industries can supply. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, woman of God, I want you to sit thank back you. and relax because we're going to we, you're welcome, we're going to get our praise on because listen regardless of how Government and society and nation will try to refuse God and put him in a place of absence. Our God will not be removed. And one day, sooner sooner or later, woman of God, Shanae L. Young, is saying that these nations that's opposing God, (laughs) that day is coming. And those nations will Mm come.
or later, all these nations are going to have to bow down, and it will be whether they want to or not. The Bible declares that every knee, woman of God, should lay in her young, every knee, regardless of yes. your race, regardless of your geographical location, regardless of your attitude, whether you willingly bow down to the almighty one God or you choose to resist and you find yourself unable to stop yourself from falling down on your face. <laughs> and giving God is just as great. Welcome, <laughs> God. I appreciate that music. That song gets my spirit up every time I listen to it. Why don't you share with us before you get out of here a little bit about yourself? I know you said that you were raised by a godly parent, that you were raised by elders in the church, preachers and uh, pastors. Uh, the point, is there a point in your life, maybe even before you started pursuing gospel recording artistry, where you said this life apart from God just doesn't make sense to me. Can you speak to somebody out there listening to this broadcast, whether they're saved or unsaved, about the importance of making this eternal decision about letting God have full control over your life? Okay, well, I want to say this. First of all, God is the creator, not the universe. <laughs> so That's right. That's only, right. you can Thank only you. seek God for your purpose. And which he created you for. You can't seek outside forces because they'll give you something that is very fraudulent. So there was a time where I rebelled against God's calling on my life and I went and did my own thing. But it only ended up where I was rerouted because the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he would not depart from it. So it doesn't mean that they uh -huh. won't stray away. But because the word was planted in me. It fell to the ground and it brought forth more, much fruit and that it veered me right back to the Lord. I came running and I fell on my knees because even in the midst of sin, I would still hear his voice mm -hmm. because my parents' children, we were saved at a young age and we one by one started veering off trying to find our own identity outside of God. But he is all I have, yeah. but he is all that I need. And so, you know, mm -hmm. your purpose yeah. is found in him. Now, the enemy will give you something that is fraudulent. Because he's a counterfeit and he's mm. the father of lies. So even if he gives yeah. you riches, um, I mean, you don't want to gain the whole world and lose your, your soul. Like, you don't want that because actually being separated from God is hell. That is the worst thing that you can experience in life itself. The days when I pray and I don't hear God's voice, I am in tears because mm. I need him. He's my very essence. He's my very breath. So I want to just encourage those who don't know God or who somebody has misappropriated who the real God is to you. If you if you seek him, you will find him. If you call him, he will answer. If you knock, he will come because he is he, he right. he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He knows you enough to number the hairs on your head. So I promise you and mm. I guarantee you, if you look for God, you will find him and he will reveal himself unto you as he's done to, to me and to millions of others. And so the reason this song came about was because I understand there is a literal war for the nations. You got the transgenders, you got the same sex. They're sitting here trying to take and reappropriate what the rainbow stands for. But God right, wants right, the right, people right. who will stand and govern the earth. God wants the people who will stand and proclaim his name. God wants the people who will have courageousness and will have really? boldness and who will speak about him anywhere at any time who will make music that came straight from the throne of God because there is demonic programming in the music and God wants his voice to be heard. God wants his cell to be heard. God wants his heart to be released in the earth and I will stand and I will proclaim it all the days of my life. And so that's where one of the songs came from. All the songs pretty much came to me, Brother Ron, in a download. Just like the word of the Lord came to the prophet. The word of the Lord came to the prophet. The song of the Lord came to the prophet. And I sang what the Lord gave me to sing. And that's what I'll do all the days of my life. So like I said, get to know God. Not the God of your grandmama. Not the God of your mama. But get to know God oh, for Lord. yourself. This is an individual affair. You cannot stand before the Lord and talk about what your grandmama taught you. You will get to know him for yourself. The spirit of the Lord is the lamp of the the spirit of the the spirit of the man is the lamp of the Lord, meaning God speaks to you and you will know his voice. As you continue to, to speak to him, you will come to know his voice. You will know his voice and the stranger you will not follow. Just give God a chance. 
I don't care what you've been, what you've done. I don't care who you've done it don't to. Matter. Give God a chance. Give him a chance. <laughs> Amen. Give him a chance. Amen. Well, 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 I guess you just preached the sermon right here. We sure do appreciate it. And uh, we're going to take a short praise break <laughs> right here just get our praise on. Because uh, that's what's up, y'all. That's what we're here to do. Give God his just be praise, y'all. Amen goes right there. <laughs> Turn that choir loose. Lord Jesus, ah, you're tuned in the fire, 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 getting our praise on right here with woman of God, Shanae L. Young. I'm talking about this girl, you just blessed my heart, you you made my day on top of church service that I just had, and I got my praise on already. You just put the icing on the fish. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, praise God. God. You're very church. welcome, brother. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. I, I certainly want to thank man of God, Jason Nation, for uh, the kingdom collaboration for you to be here on this fire gospel experience. I thank that man of God. He's doing such a fabulous job. Look forward to working with him. Absolutely. They're talking about he bringing is. a gospel concert here to where I am, my birthplace, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Grew up in Detroit. But uh, I'm looking forward to kingdom collaboration. And one day, one day, our paths may cross and we'll celebrate and we'll fellowship and we'll just have a good time in the Lord together. And uh, look, if I take too long and you got some new music, you go ahead and send me that music off. You got a burn in your spirit and you want to come on here and testify about the good things of the Lord like you just got through doing, sister girl. You're welcome to do so. Just get in touch with me. Amen. I got to move somebody out. I got to move somebody out the way. I'll do it. I'll do it. Thank you, woman of God. We so Amen. do appreciate you. I, I pray God no will continue No problem. Thank you for having teaching. me. Now, now, I'm understanding that you could be reached by booking. Is there a phone number that you could be reached? Or do people just got to get in touch with Man of God, Jason Nation? How how do y'all do that? How that work? Well, I actually have a website where they can actually go mm-hmm. for booking, and it's www.shanae, which is spelled S-H-A-N as in Nancy, N as in Nancy, A-E, L like Larry, and the last name is Young.com. So once again, www.shanaelyoung.com. And they can go to my music page because my website has my uh, my beauty, my makeup, and my music all, all in that. one place. So that it's like you can Wonderful. get me for whatever you need to get me for. But the music, you can click on that, that tab on the website, and it'll show you what you need to do next. But that's definitely how they can get in contact with me. Um, they can send an email right from the website, and then we can coordinate that way. That's what I'm talking about. Woman of God, they got all them irons in the fire, and she's still shining bright for Jesus. I love it. Listen, woman of yes, God, happens. I pray God will continue to shine on you. I pray God will continue to bless you and move you forward to that expected end of fruitfulness, blessings, and rewards as you shower the surroundings and the people and the circumstances that God places you in to make a positive influence for God to his glory. Amen. Amen. Ah, come on, woman. Amen. I received that, bro. Glory. Thank you so much, Brother Ron. Thank you so much. Woman of God, Shanae L. Young, right here in our shine. I respond right now. Yeah. 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 You people of God, y'all got me saying in myself, and it ain't even that time of season in my life, all that saying and carrying on. That's just that fire, y'all, that fire that be burning inside of the people of God. When we connect with one another, when we see purpose and destiny in the lives of other believers, that is so encouraging because it doesn't matter. I'm not in competition with you and what you call to do. What you call to do when I see it done in excellence, when I see it done at high levels of appropriateness and shining bright, that encourages me because I told y'all at the beginning of this broadcast, God never respect a person. That lets me know if he does it for you. All I got to do is stand in line and wait to be crazy because he'll do it for me next. You're tuned in to Fire, 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 the gospel experience. We just love you, God. We fall in love with God over and over again. If you don't believe me, ask man of God, J.E. White. Yeah, think about it. We fall in love all over again with our God. No matter how far or fall there's no pit too deep, you won't come after me. And no matter how high I fly, there's no high too high, your love can't 
can reach In the darkest times You're the light Shining consistently I fall in love Oh Fall in love with you I fall in love Come on, help me sing it No matter how far No matter how high I fly In the darkest times Shining Sing Hello, I'm Woman of God, Coach Tamara J, Certified Coach Trainer, CEO and Founder of the Empowerment Coaching Institute, Speaker, Radio Host, Counselor, and certainly a born-again believer of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Grateful to God Almighty who called me to celebrate who He is in the highest degree. I'm inviting everyone to join me on my new broadcast, the Life Coach Collective Podcast, where you will be blessed in the engaging, encouraging, and uplifting biblical real-life conversations where my special guests will share their experiences, knowledge, strength, faith, and expertise on how God has manifested their life in a very special way. You can tune in to the Life Coach Collective Podcast on Tuesdays at 12 o'clock p.m. noon, Central Standard Time, beginning July 13, 2021. 
visit me at CoachTamaraJ.com for more information. Or if you want to be my special guest, you can contact me at my email, EmpowerYou at CoachTamaraJ.com. I'm also encouraging everyone to get a new copy of my book, My Love Prayer Journal, where we are sharing powerful prayer declarations to activate your faith and enrich your life, your relationship with God. You can purchase a copy of my book at CoachTamaraJ.com for the simple price of $14.95. And you are listening to The Fire, the gospel experience, where the fire is a moving, uplifting, and unrestrained experience of biblical inspiration and gospel music. I'm inviting you to let the fire of Jesus Christ shine bright in your life. So by all means, keep it tuned in to The Fire, the gospel experience, which will uplift your spirit and give you strength. Be a blessing to your family, your friends, and coworkers by telling them about the fire on this station. It's all about kingdom building. Troubles found a lot to be a friend of mine.
My God, my God. That's new music from a new gospel group from Woman of God. One of my dear, very favorite, Sheila Moore Piper, letting you know anything is possible. She did that instrumental groove and just came in there to do a little bit on the side. That's how we do it. We praising God from all different venues, veins, and vocations. You tuned in to Fire the Gospel Experience, and we are embracing for your spiritual consideration as well as your sanctified supplement from the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. We're going to go at around, let's see here, verses 13 and 14, talking about hide and seek. Lord Jesus, we ain't trying to hide the word of God from the King James Version of the Bible says, and ye shall seek me and find me. When ye shall search for me with all your heart, not some of your heart, not a piece of your heart, but with all of your heart. Verse 14 says, and I will find, and I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whether I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place which I caused you to be carried away captive. Now, people in general, whether saved or unsaved, have some similarities between them. That is when trials, troubles, and tragedies rear its ugly head, we intentionally together like a chorus choir singing in syncopated harmony. We cry out on elbows and knees unto the Lord. In dust and ashes, repenting everything that we can conjure up to pray for from our time of day to our present day now. We grovel, groan, moan, and whine just to get a peep of a word of relief from the Lord. But did our amazing and almighty God promise to keep pain, suffering, and agony away from us? No, sir. No, ma'am. He, talking about God, he never did. Second Timothy 3 and 12 says, you gave. And all that will live godly in Christ Jesus will, shall suffer persecution. And when persecution, bondage, and slavery fell on the northern kingdom of God, they received a shockingly disappointed prophetic word from the prophet Jeremiah. He said, thus said the Lord of hosts. The God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captive, whom I have called to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses and dwell in them. And plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons. And give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there and not diminished. And seek the place and the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captive. And pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. Now, it sounds like the message was, in our modern day vernacular, grin and bear it. <laughs> I was a God of integrity, holiness, and just as he, God, had forewarned the nation of Israel a multiplicity of times to be and stay obedient to his divine instruction. Yet prosperity, success, and favor can be a detour when we lose sight of the giver becoming more enamored with his gifts. Verse 8 says, and thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which ye call to be dreams. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, said the Lord. Now when we lag in our faith walk and discipline, we open the door for false influences to creep into our lives which actually draws us away from our source, God, that we sorely need to recover, be restored, and fully redeemed. Verse 10 says, For thus says the Lord, 
that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. Wow. We're talking about the hide and seek in Jeremiah 29, verses 13 and 14, and a few of the other following verses. We're just making it plain. We're just telling it like it is. Because I'm here to tell you that is my God. Working, not hiding. It's us. Uh, are we doing the proper seeking that we should be seeking God? Not in pretense, not in show, but in sincerity. His man of God, Maziel Park Pratchett, in his group Limitless, talking about that's my God. That is the Almighty One. Yes. family what's going on this is jerry Rush live worldwide A.K. the batman from charm city maryland and you're listening to fire the gospel experience with ron e jefferson right here on positive power double xi christian media amen amen tell me again brother jerry royce over there at positive power 21 christian media i want to thank all of you beautiful people that are voting for yours truly on the 2023 the Praise Factor Awards, Lord Jesus, I want to thank y'all. Yours truly have been nominated as producer, host of the year, as well as podcast of the year, Fire the Gospel Experience. You go to my Facebook page, Ron E. Jefferson, and find the link to vote for me. 
and I am just thankful. I am humble. I, I feel like I've already won just by being nominated in such a company of anointed and beautiful people that do what I do and beyond. I am just grateful and thankful for whoever the anonymous person was that put my name in for nomination for the 2023-16 season of the Praise Factor Awards. Yours truly being nominated as producer, host of the year, as well as fire the gospel experience as podcast of the year. Can't thank y'all enough. Such a humbling experience. I appreciate y'all. If you want to vote for me or you want to vote for somebody else that's blessing you, even if it's not me, I ain't mad at you. Let your heart lead and guide you is what I'm saying. Amen. You can go to Praise Factor Award and pull up the link for voting. Uh, this is the first round, and uh, voting is still going on right now. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Can't thank you enough. We are discussing hide and seek from the Old Testament book of Jeremiah. Chapter 19, verses 13 and 14 are our key verses, but we are just circulating that Holy Spirit God will lead us. We had to go to verse 10 where it says, For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished in Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you in causing you to return to this place. I learned a very deep lesson about praying to God for his divine interventions after suffering long and Many years of sincerity, righteous living to the best of my ability without my situation getting any better, which inevitably becomes worse when situations don't get better. I had my conscience reviewed as I was led by Holy Spirit God. I did indeed make decisions, y'all, that created my circumstances. And I heard a voice that said, God isn't obligated to deliver us from everything that we had gotten ourselves into. Yeah, wow. Ah, listen, learn. So what I was able to relate with the captive children of Israel is the self-infliction caused by our charging ahead, the disregard, without consulting the Lord. And any and all willful disobedience Verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Our eternal God exists outside the parameters of space and time, which he, by the way, God was the creator of. So he, God, exists in what is known as the eternal now, where the Beginning, middle, and end are all intertwined in the same vein. He, God, already knows the outcome. And he, God, circumvents as he, God, so chooses or not. Now, in the case of the captive children of Israel, God made it known that their consequences would be a seven-year term of captivity and slavery. And being the gracious king of kings and lord of lords, God is even in our harshest times there with us. Verse 12 says, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Wow. That when their once were fledgling faith had found its way home from their unfaithful hiding from God, which now through their difficult reality of pain, indignation, and introspection, they came back to the seeking of God as their source for redirection for a life lived by exclusive faith in God. I think faith can always be measured by our behavior, composure, actions, habits, which surmise our dedicated Daily living to God. That's the part right there that I'm talking about. The daily living part. We don't take no days off. We don't tell God, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'll do something different. No. We stick with the commitment that God has placed before us, and we follow those guidelines to the very best of our ability. God knows our heart. And this is why he, God, has gifted us with a new heart which is indeed the heart of his son, our Lord Jesus, our Savior, which is transferred into us through the washing of the water of the word and the indwelling of Holy Spirit God, who we should always seek his face and never, ever attempt to hide from the one who loves us enough 
to die for us. John 15 and 13 says, No one has greater love. No one has shown stronger affection than to lay down, give up his own life for his friends, as read through the amplified version of the word. Talking about hide and seek. Talking about if God is hiding or he appears to be hiding, it's because we probably more than likely did not properly seek his face continuously in a way that is pleasing in his sight and not manufactured by our own. Amen goes right there. We have to rise up like man of God, Aaron Banks always lets us know in his solidified, sanctified ministry of stand up and be counted. We just need to rise up. Amen.
all power will be on you to empower you to preach the gospel to the nation. Like God told Joshua, be strong and very courageous. We're supposed to be bold. It's time to rise up. Rise up, rise up with man of God, Aaron Banks, and his beautiful anointed wife. Featured on that Rise Up edition of gospel music on the front line, Shamika Banks, known as Super Me, doing it husband and wife style on this fire gospel experience. And you got to love that. I know I do. And before that, we heard from woman of God, Sheila Moore Piper. Anything is possible. And just so that you know, that was May, man of God, made the old precious in the group limited. And that's my God. And all the way back before that, we heard from woman of God, S.W. Washington, and a group favorite talking about God got it. I want you to support all of these gospel artists. That's why we let y'all know who y'all listening to so that y'all can support them because they don't always get the airplay on traditional stations and radio stations because they want that loot. They want the bag. They want the money. We're here by the grace of God and the support of these wonderful listeners that choose to support this broadcast. Through your prayers, through your financial donations, on, and through your listenership and sharing these broadcasts, we really, really do appreciate you. You tuned into fire, the gospel experience. I got time. Let me turn the heat up on this bad boy right about now. Ah, here we go, y'all. Hello, I'm Woman of God, Pastor Cynthia Butler, gospel minister, speaker, author, human rights consultant, entrepreneur, and member of the gospel group Kona Adafe and certainly a servant of our Lord Jesus the Christ. Grateful to God Almighty who called me to celebrate who he is in the highest. If you're in search of someone who speaks life and gospel truth or sing gospel music with the ladies of Kona Adafe at your event, congregation, a fellowship group, I'll be just the person that you're looking for. I would encourage everyone also to get a copy of my books, Shouting into the darkness or who's running the church, which expresses my experience in intimate lessons of learning who God is, the truth of his word, and how it affects our lives. You can purchase my books on Amazon.com or my online publicist publishes at for $15. You can call me, contact me at 865-405-7452, or you can email me at Konai Adelphi, K-O-A-N-I-A-D-E-L-P-H-E at gmail.com. And you are listening listening to to FIRE, FIRE, the the gospel gospel experience experience where the the fire fire is a moving, uplifting, and unrestrained experience of biblical inspiration and gospel music. I am inviting you to let the light of Jesus Christ shine bright in your life. So by all means, keep it tuned in into fire, the gospel experience, which will uplift your spirit and give you new strength. Be a blessing. To your family, friends, and co-workers by telling them about fire. fire on this station. It's all about kingdom building. Felt heartaches and pain. There were some times I stumbled through the ice cold rain, but I held on to my God's hand. He'll lift you up and help you to stand. Just keep holding.
God can do What he's done for someone else He can do the same for you
But please know Troubles don't come to last I have learned to look for the future And release the past Ooh, I am Yeah. <laughs> 